Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Uh, today we're going to start a small video series of just some of the extra options that we've got for integrating QNAP with VMware. Um, we do have integrations with other hypervisors as well, but we'll be focusing on VMware for this series. Um, so I've got a small little uh, home lab set up here, and the uh, plugin we're going to talk about today is the vSphere plugin um, so that you can add um, better management, easier management uh, between your vSphere environment and your QNAP, especially for uh, creating, connecting, um, destroying data stores, things like that. Um, it's much easier to do, especially with iSCSI. Um, anybody that's ever uh, mounted an iSCSI volume into VMware will know that you've got to go to the storage first, and you've got to create your iSCSI target, your LAN, you've got to copy the IQN path, uh, go to your hosts. If you've got lots of hosts, you've got to paste that IQN path into each of those. Uh, if you want to set some restrictions, you've then got to copy the hosts IQN path and put them in a restricted list back in your storage. Um, it's a lot of steps to get it done. Um, and, and then you've got to rescan your HBA, your iSCSI adapter to actually mount the storage to all your different hosts. Um, all those steps are taken care of automatically with our vSphere plugin. Uh, before we get into the vSphere plugin itself, we'll talk about the, the NAS I'm using with the vSphere VMware setup that I've got here. So I'm using a TS-H886, uh, one of the lower cost um, enterprise desktops that we've got. Um, so with this unit here, I've got it configured with six 12 terabyte uh, Seagate Ironwolf Pro drives. These are just a large sort of archive volume that I've got running in my VMware environment. And I've also got a couple of their uh, Ironwolf 510 NVMEs put in as well um, to host my uh, running VMs in there. They, they run much, much faster um, from the four gigasecond uh, NVMe drives that I've got added in here as well. So that's a little bit about the NAS that I'm using. I'm not using a very big um, enterprise multi-core um, Xeon rack mounts with many, many gigs of RAM or anything like this. This NAS only has 16 gig of RAM in it. It's running our QUTS Hero operating system. Um, so first things first is getting the, the plugin downloaded. Um, you do have to have a Windows machine. So although I'm using a Mac here, um, I've obviously got a VMware environment here. So I've just fired up a Windows 10 VM to do the installation. Um, the easiest way to find the plugins is go to your NAS of choice that you want to use the plugin with. Um, I've selected the exact NAS I've got. In the download section, there is a utility heading there. And in the utility section, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll start seeing all the different options that we've got. So the one I'm going to go with is, because I'm running vSphere 7, I'm going with the vCSA plugin, which is the, uh, the vCenter server appliance that I've got running as a VM in my VMware environment. I'm going to pick the very latest one, so 5.0.1.19. Um, so that's the one I've already got downloaded into a Windows virtual machine. So we'll go across to that. Uh, so here is a, a Windows 10 VM running in my VMware environment. And I've already installed the plugin. So it basically downloads as a very small uh, package here. There's a readme file there that basically says right click on the setup.cmd and choose run as administrator, which I've done and it's already installed it. Um, you do have to have Java installed in your Windows environment for it to run. Uh, again, I've already got that as well. So here on the desktop, I've got the, uh, the icon for the installed software. So to deploy the plugin, you simply double click and open it. It wants you to authenticate with your vCenter now. So I've already typed in some of the information. So all it wants now is the password. So we'll type that in and we'll connect to the vCenter. And this will let you know if you already have the plugin installed or not. So current plugin right now is blank. So to add the plugin, it's simply a case of clicking register plugin. There we go. Do you want to exit the application? I'll say yes. Okay, so if you wanted to check the deployment, there's a you can go straight back into the application and you can re-authenticate and it should now register. Type the password wrong. It should now register that you've uh, got a current plugin that it was showing as blank before. So there we go. So the new plugin we've got and the current plugin. It's the exact same process if you're updating for an older version as well. Um, you can just see that the uh, current plugin is an older version than the new one, and you can register the new one over the top of it. Um, so now that the plugin is registered, um, added in, if we go back to the vSphere environment, we should be able to see there at the top, it says that the plugin QNAP vSphere client plugin has been successfully deployed. You've got to refresh the browser. 
So if I refresh that, we should also see a, a recent task that will have taken place as well. So if I just pop up the uh, task list there, so we can see that the deploy, deploy plugin function um, happened and it's all added in. Now, there's a couple of extra ways you can check to make sure that it's been deployed. Um, down here on the left, you've got the administration section. When you're in the administration section, there is a client plugins option. And when you click that, the newest plugin should be there at the top. So we can see that the QNet vSphere client plugin has been enabled. Um, so to configure the plugin, you have to add your NAS to it first of all. So the easiest place to do that is just click the vSphere client VM logo at the top there. It takes you to your shortcut list and you've now got a QNAP symbol over on the right hand side that wasn't there before. So if we click into that, it's going to show you all the QNAP storages. So I already had the plugin installed before, I just removed it for the video. So I've already got one QNAP that's added. So we can see here, if I click onto it, the very specific QNAP that I've got. Um, and it will show you the capabilities that when you've added that QNAP into the system, what it can do. So uh, we can do iSCSI, um, I've enabled NFS3 and NFS4, uh, so I can see all those functions. It gives you a basic bit of information about the firmware of the NAS. And in the Actions tab, you can even go straight to the web interface of the QNAP. Uh, once you've initially got your QNAP set up and you've got this plugin installed, um, there is very little reason for you to go back to your QNAP interface because you can do absolutely everything um, with this plugin on the unit. Uh, if you wanted to add more than one NAS or add a NAS for the first time, um, there's just an add QNAP storage button that you can click and it will go through. Um, you can choose the scan option. I, I won't click that, it, it takes a little while for a video, but you can click the scan or you can just simply type the details in that you need, uh, what functionality your QNAP's got. You can tick the boxes and then you will add it into your uh, vSphere environment. Now, once it's added into the vSphere environment, you can go across to your um, set up your, your data center, your cluster, however you've got it set up. You can go to your individual hosts as well if you want. Um, so if you want to add a, a piece of storage to an area, you can simply right click on your host, your data center, your cluster, whichever you want to, and you've now got a QNAP menu that's appeared down at the bottom. So within this QNAP menu, you then get all the different options of the different functions that you're going to get. So things like connecting data stores, uh, creating data stores. Oh, so if I scroll down, it's coming off the bottom. So we've got creating data stores, disconnect an existing one, connect one that's already been created in the background, or you can completely destroy a data store. So if I was to click create a data store, um, at the same time I do this, I want to show you in the NAS config screens, I'll show you what the iSCSI and fiber channel setup looks like right now. So I'll create an iSCSI one simply because that's the one it saves the most time on. So I've got three iSCSI uh, volumes LUNs um, connected into uh, my vSphere environment by both of my hosts. Um, if I wanted to connect um, this one specific host to another one, I'll create another one here called test. There's no copying and pasting of all these IQNs or adding them into a restricted path. Um, so if I go back to the vSphere environment, select the QNAP storage. I only have one added, so that's in the list. I'm going to click next. You can choose the data store type. So I'm going to do the VMFS one at the top. Um, and I'm going to add it to my local host here, the ESXi host one that I've got. Click next. You can set up some authentication if you want. So you can create usernames and passwords. Um, I'll leave that blank for the uh, purposes of the demo. Click next. Now you can create the data store name. So I'll just call this one test. And then you can choose what size you want this uh, volume to be. So let's say I want a five gig volume. Um, block based is the only option you can pick. It's, it's selected by default and you can choose which storage pool you get it added into. So I've got a couple of different ones there. Um, so I'll just keep it in the NVMEs on the smaller storage there. Uh, because I am running QUTS Hero, we do have options for um, inline compression and inline data deduplication enabled there. Um, I'm not running an SSD cache, so that's grayed out. The, the plugin already knows the capabilities of the NAS and it knows it doesn't have an SSD cache, so there's no option to actually enable that. So I'll just leave it on the default settings there and click Next, click Next, and click Finish. So now what it's going to do is the plugin is now uh, communicating with the NAS. It's asking the NAS to set everything up. So all that's happening in the background. If we go across and click to the NAS, we should see in a moment, uh, we will see the, um, the test iSCSI LUN get created here um, in the list. It will automatically be connected. Um, the HBA and the, the, the host bus adapter over on the ESXi host will scan the new adapter and it will mount that extra data store that we've done. So we can see here that it's created DS test, so data store test. 
um, and within that we've already got the learn at five gigs that was created so in a few seconds as well we should see that it pops up instead of saying ready it should change to say connected so the host is now doing its configuration uh, now that the NAS has reported back that it's got the uh, the new volume all ready to go so that's going to be connected to in the background if we go over and check the volume here so if we go across to the host and go to the data stores we can see that we've got that test uh, iSCSI volume that's been created it's already been formatted with VMFS 5 and there's the capacity of the volume that we've got if we go back to the QNAP just refresh that list there we can see that it's connected to and because I only created it on a single host it's only showing a single host my other ones which I've got connected to multiple ones are added so I can simply go to the other host and add it or I could have done it at the data center level to connect it to both so if we go in and check what else it did so if we go to the properties it's all grayed out because it's connected so I can't change any settings while it's connected by something but we can see that it's actually added um, the initiator name directly in so it's added the IQN and restricted connections to only that host um, so it's already put the security in place that nobody else can connect to that except the host I've added it on if you wanted it to automatically add both hosts you would add it at the um, at the cluster level or the data center level so that everything would have got that volume mounted to it directly uh, that would be important if you're using things like uh, HA or VMware DRS so you'd need um, all your hosts to be able to connect to it at the same time um, so that's how how easy it is to um, add the the plugin um, how to use it how to add the NAS to it um, and to create a volume there directly within VMware um, really really a, a massive time saver it's a completely free plugin as well um, and depending on which version of um, vSphere that you have whether you're running an older VMware version you need the HTML version or the C version web client plugins that they've got you can choose all sorts of different types and um, we do make and update uh, different plugins uh, for different versions of VMware there Okay, um, so the, the next video should be about the uh, vSphere uh, VAAI plugin, uh, which is basically hardware offloading um, of moving things around uh, your data stores within the NAS or within the SAN directly. Okay, thanks a lot.